Hello, I'm Amanda and welcome to Talking Adoption Together, brought to you by Together for Adoption, the regional adoption agency for Cheshire West and Chester, Halton, St Helens, Warrington and Wigan. Taking that first step and contacting us might feel a little daunting and no doubt you'll have lots of questions. So I'm going to be joined by Hannah, one of our recruitment and assessment social workers, to talk about the process and answer some of our most frequently asked questions. Hello Hannah, welcome and thank you for joining us. Uh, so can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Hi, of course. So my name's Hannah and I'm a recruitment and assessment social worker for Together for Adoption. Uh, and I've been with TFA for nearly three years now. So a lot of people who are listening uh, might be thinking about making an inquiry with us. Can you talk us through what would happen when they first make contact and then what would happen moving forward? Yes, so the first port of call would be you making a initial inquiry and it's the information gathering stage. So you might attend an information session or speak to one of our duty social workers who can answer any questions you may have. When you feel ready, we do what we call a robust phone call. We would gather some very basic information from yourself, for example, covering your work, health, living circumstances, and get those initial bits of information from you. And this is the stage where we want to make sure you are fully ready and adoption is the right option for you. And these early stages can really confirm whether adoption is the right journey for you uh, and making sure that we've got the right time. Now, following this phone call and providing everything's OK, we would then arrange a initial visit. So typically an initial visit would be done at your home, but due to COVID restrictions, we have been doing some of these virtually. The visit takes a couple of hours and if you are applying to adopt as a couple, um, but we would want both of you there. And during this visit, the social worker would go through things in a bit more detail. It's an important opportunity for us to find out more about you and for you to find more about us and answer any questions. So we will cover things like your lifestyle, upbringing, relationships with your family members and what kind of support network you have. We'll also look into your motivation to adopt and your understanding of the needs of adopted children and the uncertainties you might face in the process. And at the end of this visit, we would advise you on whether now would be the right time for you to start the process. Brilliant, thank you. So how long does the assessment process take once you've got past the initial inquiry stage? So stage one is 61 days and stage two is 121 days. So roughly in total, it's around six months. Now stage one is predominantly what we call adopter led. So we will provide you with lots of resources where you can do independent research. And this is something we really encourage you to do and will ultimately help in your development and your knowledge of adoption. We also ask that you complete a portfolio of work, and this will be lots of homework tasks that we support you with to complete for us. This includes family trees, eco maps, which goes through your support network, experiences with children documents, and information about your own experience as a child, how you were parented, your life experiences to date, and how you have arrived at adoption. We send off for a number of checks during stage one, such as DBSs, which are police checks, adoption medicals, personal references, current employers and previous employers if you've worked with children, young people or vulnerable adults. We would also ask for an ex-partner reference if you have had a previous relationship where a, chil a child or children have been involved. Um, so because you have parented with someone else, we would want to have information about your involvement with those children. So once we have received your safeguarding checks and you have completed all of the training, the social work worker would review everything and we could then look at proceeding on to stage two. So stage two is where we arrange lots of assessment visits and it's usually around eight to ten visits with you and your social worker. And we will provide a stage two plan which will detail all of the dates, times and areas of discussion for each visit. And all of this information, along with your checks, your independent learning, your training and your portfolio work, will all be incorporated into a report which we call a prospective adopters report and we refer to as a PAR. The PAR will be shared with you so you know exactly what is written in it. There shouldn't be any surprises within it. And once we have shared this and managers of quality assured it, 
It will then be submitted to panel members to read ahead of your panel date. We will prepare and support you to attend panel and you will not be alone in attending. Your social worker will, will be with you the whole time. You will have a good understanding of what to expect and who will be there. But panel members are really very friendly and they only want the opportunity to meet with you. Panel will make a recommendation about your suitability to adopt. And from this point, you will be an approved adopter and we can start looking at matching. OK, so how long then would the matching process take? So timescales for this process can be very varied depending on your matching criteria. And your matching criteria is something that we go through in stage two. And it looks at what age range, gender and number of children, for example, siblings, you feel able to consider. But it also looks at what you can offer an adopted child. It considers your strengths and experiences and also your ability to consider particular medical backgrounds, birth families' health and their backgrounds and potential uncertainties with regards to future development. You will be fully supported by your social worker in putting together your matching criteria. What we say here is it's really important to get the match right than to stick to a specific time frame. Can you tell us a little bit about who can and who cannot adopt? Yeah, so there are many misconceptions about who can and can't adopt, and we welcome anyone to inquire to adopt. However, it's important to note that we would need adopters to be over the age of 21 and not be convicted of a specified offence, for example, a sexual offence or an offence related to a child. We do not exclude anyone from consideration on the grounds of sexual orientation, race, marital status, gender, disability or employment status. And we work with many adopters who already have birth children and we consider families of all shapes and sizes. So uh, do adopters need to own their own home or earn a specific income to adopt? No, you don't need to own your own home. Um, you may rent privately or be in a property provided by a housing association or the local authority, or you can own your own home. Um, you don't need to be employed or earning a specific income to adopt. But during the assessment, we will look at your income and management of money so we can ensure you can financially meet the needs of a child throughout their life. So is there an age limit to becoming an adopter? No, there isn't an upper age limit. We just need to take into consideration your individual circumstances and your health to ensure that you are able to meet the needs of the child and support them into adulthood. Can you adopt if you have any underlying medical conditions or a disability, for example? Yes, yeah, so many people who adopt have a wide range of health conditions and disabilities. We ask that all of our adopters engage in an adoption medical, with these being mandatory in stage one. And your medicals are undertaken by your local GP, then reviewed by one of our medical advisors. And the reason we do this is to make sure that you are able to meet the short and long term needs of our children throughout their childhood. And within this, we would also consider your support network, which we would need to explore to determine who would help you with childcare should you not be in a position to care for your child yourself. And if people do have health conditions and are worried that it may affect their application to adopt, please contact us to talk about it in more detail. We work really hard to try and remove barriers to support people who want to adopt. What about if uh, if you smoke? Can that affect an application to adopt? So if you smoke, it doesn't mean you can't become an adopter. However, it will mean that you um, can't be considered for certain adoptive children. For example, a child with a specific medical condition or a child under the age of five years. OK, so what about pets? Uh, we often get asked the question, can I adopt if I have do a dog, for example? Yes, absolutely. You can adopt if you have pets and pets can often be really good for our adopted children. All we need to do is check that our children are safe to be around your pets. And as part of the assessment, we would consider any pets within your home and the impact of this upon adopting a child. We do pet assessments and specifically dog assessments. In some scenarios, we would ask for a private dog assessment to be carried out, which would explore a dog's temperament from a qualified professional. A private dog assessment would be something that is funded by adopters if it was deemed necessary. OK, so next question. Can you tell us a little bit about the children that are currently waiting for adoption? Yeah, so there are lots of reasons children are placed for adoption. 
And in most cases, children are removed from their birth parents by the courts as they have been unable to provide safe, secure homes for them. And the courts have decided that adoption would be in the child's best interests. We are actively recruiting adopters to meet the needs of our children, especially siblings. So for those adopters who imagine more than one child in their family, we'd really encourage you to consider adopting brothers and sisters together, as this may be the perfect option for you to discuss with your social worker. It will mean you will only need to go through the process once, but it would also mean that you would parent children with the same birth family background, with the same or similar experiences and a shared history together. It also means we can keep our siblings together, which is our priority when we're family finding. We're also working hard to find placements for older children. And unfortunately, older children in adoption agencies are those children aged four years and older, which is realistically still very, very young. And the reason that for this is the majority of adopters want to adopt babies and therefore older children can be overlooked. There are still so many firsts that older children have not experienced, such as first holidays, swimming lessons, bike rides. So for many of our older children, adopters can experience all those firsts that they would want to with a younger child. We're also looking for adopters to consider children with developmental uncertainties. And uncertainties will always feature within adoption for every child. And it's important to understand that there will always be additional factors to consider throughout the matching process. And it's important to be realistic about your expectations and what you can support a child with. Whilst you as adopters will get every bit of information we have about a child, we cannot predict the future. So there will always be an element of uncertainty. We often get asked uh, for more information about fostering for adoption. And this is a big topic. Uh, but could you very briefly summarise what fostering for adoption is? Yes, so fostering for adoption is when an adopter is temporarily approved as a foster carer for a specific child, meaning that child will be placed with them from a much earlier age, potentially from birth. Initially, the adopters would be foster carers and would need to carry out the tasks required by a foster carer. But it's important to note that there wouldn't be a placement order at this time so that there would be a lot more uncertainty. A placement order is what the judge grants, which gives us permission to place a child with adopters for the purpose of adoption. This would mean, though, that if the judge does grant the placement order, that the child has only lived with one family, which means the child has had a lot more stability. Oh, thank you, Hannah. Um, so we are on our last question now. So what advice would you give somebody who was thinking of taking that first step in their adoption journey? I'm often the person that is on the end of the phone when you contact us for the first time. And we appreciate that this will have taken a lot of thought and often heartache. We appreciate that calling us may not be easy, but we assure you, you know, we have a really lovely team and we only want the best for our children and our families. We will work hard with you to make sure that now is the right time for you to adopt and we'll make sure that you are making a fully informed decision. My advice is you have nothing to lose in picking up the phone and there is no such thing as a silly question. You're not committing to anything by making that phone call or online inquiry form and it can really just be a conversation. So go ahead when you feel ready. A huge thank you to Hannah for talking us through the process and answering some of our most frequently asked questions. If you're thinking about adoption and would like to find out more about the process or speak to a member of our team about your personal circumstances, then you can contact us by completing an online inquiry form or alternatively, you can call our main office number on 01942 487 272. Thank you for listening to Talking Adoption Together.